Welcome to the Sunday special on Top Med Talk. It's a potpourri of our favourite longer pieces, ideal for downloading and enjoying when you have a little bit more time. Top Med Talk. Uh, I am Desiree Chapel, host, and I am joined tonight by some friends uh, of the family. We have, of course, the editor in chief, Monty Martin. Hello, hey, Monty. Desiree. How are you? Good. Great. Great. Um, and then I'm taken, of course, by our, our wonderful friend, Mike Grocott. Mike, Hi, Desiree. how are you? I'm very good. Good to good, see you. Good. So uh, we're excited to talk to you. Um, what I was noticing is that you look a little bit more pale than what I'm normal. What we're <laughs> used to see. And it's probably because you're not feeling bad. But um, you haven't probably been exposed to the sun lately. Is that? Uh, is I that have the not case? been exposed to the sun as much as normal. No, that's correct. <laughs> but you've been on the water. I have. So it's. What not, are you driving at? Uh, <laughs> where have you been, Mike? Tell us I've, about I've it. I've just <laughs> come back from a trip to Antarctica. With, oh, with that Danny. would explain it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, how was that for you? It was extraordinary. It was. I was working, just to emphasise. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, it, but it was uh, exceeded all expectations. Hang on, hang on. People have been bursting out in laughter <laughs> listening to this at the moment. Go, go on, working. Eight yes. lectures, 40 minutes each. Okay, what, 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 what do you call yeah, work? Say, say, how many days? How many? What kind I, of? I, I, how I, many? I, I, how I many was on intensive care for the weekend, or at least half of it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, in ten days on the on the ship. Wow, that's a lot. So one lecture. Kind of a day. 40 mm, minutes rough. a day. Is that 40 minutes a day, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I real, hate, real. hate that. <laughs> what, every day? <laughs> <laughs> no, no not, not every day. Eight out of ten. So you were sunning. Oh, wait, no, you weren't sunning, but you were laying out on the uh, on the deck of the boat, just hanging out. Mm, too, it was right? a little cold. <laughs> so what, what were you lecturing on? What was the, what's the deal? What, all, what did you do? So the expedition was an yeah. uh, Australian anesthetic conference oh. uh, focused around uh, extreme medicine of various types. So we were lecturing on various aspects of the Everest Extreme Everest Project uh, and then various other anaesthetic, perioperative medicine, prehabilitation yeah. uh, type issues and, and a couple of new talks for me. So, so I talked about uh, the opioid epidemic in the States, which is relatively fresh to an Australian audience, mm-hmm. and, uh, and about Tom Cream, who we can come back to. Oh, oh yeah, I'd like to know more <laughs> about, about Tom in a second. <laughs> So, so, Mike, can you expand? This is the sort of conference that I'm interested in, <laughs> obviously. What? Tell us a little bit more about how, how many people were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, How did you get there? So the, know, the, what, what was the conference centre like? The conference centre was a ship okay, uh, right. <laughs> uh, called the National Geographic Explorer, which is, uh, is a ship specifically designed for doing polar exploration north and south. And uh, originally they, their ambition had been to half fill the ship, uh, which has a capacity of 150 uh, with uh, anaesthetists or anesthesiologists as they're starting to call them in uh, Australia these days mm. and uh, they had so much uh, interest from Australians that they virtually filled the ship so they had to move some of the people who'd previously planned who were not anaesthetists to come on the trip onto, uh, onto other awesome. trips. Uh, so do they do this expedition it's always about extreme environments and things so like that this is very specific. This group of people have never done it before oh, it, it, gotcha. has a, it was apparently done about 20 years ago yeah. Uh, and may or may not happen again in the future, but this was a novel project from the three people who organized it. Oh, that's really cool. And so what, so you said some of the topics that you were talking about. To, to, uh, extreme. Uh, and then what was acclimatization the... Acclimatization to altitude, the Extreme Everest Project, prehabilitation, uh, opioid epidemic, a whole, whole spectrum of different things. But there was a general flavor of, uh, of extreme medicine. So uh, one of the other guest speakers was a chap called uh, Mike, Michael Barrett, Mike Barrett, who's a... Uh, an astronaut who's a physician. Oh. Who so I was, was going to ask, about, like, who, who else was on there talking about these things? Uh, they had uh, a lady who'd been at base camp during the avalanche uh, in 2016, I think it was, uh, and had a very harrowing tale to tell. And then, and then various other uh, pure anaesthetic talks, but a, bu- a bunch of them that were focused on different aspects of extreme physiology. Yeah. Monty. So, so Mike, uh, it sounds like you spent quite a lot of time in ships in... What I when I the little bit I've seen on the movies and stuff, it sounds like big seas. <laughs> Is it? How would you get there? Did you fly to South America first and then? So we flew. So direct flight from London to Buenos Aires, okay. and then you take a charter down to Ushuaia, which is uh, off the bottom of South American mainland in in Tierra del Fuego. Yep. And then the ship goes from there, and it crosses a piece of water called the Drake Passage, which is the water that separates the bottom of South America from the Antarctic Peninsula. It's about 500 miles across. How, how many days at sea when you do that bit? About 36 hours, maybe a bit longer, depending on conditions. Oh, is that all? I thought it was like days and days. 
36 I've only been away two weeks. Uh, no, but I, I, I don't know why. I it's sort of 36 to 48 hours, depending on whether okay. you go to the okay. South Shetland Islands, which are a bit closer, or whether you go round. And on the way down, we'll come back to the way back in a second. I mean, I just have this image of horrible, big, messy seas. So, so the way down was really benign. And okay. we, all, we got to, um, we, we actually went direct, direct to the South Shetland Islands, which are a little bit north of the peninsula. And, and I think there was a slight feeling of disappointment that people hadn't <laughs> that had the, the full Drake <laughs> Passage experience because it really was very steady. And so channel like crossing or a bit bigger, Isle of Wight, other side of the I mean, Isle of Wight. Cru- so in still the sort of two or three metre waves. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, but in a 350-foot in a ship. But stabilised yeah. and stabilized, not, feeling too, not too much thrown up going on because I get badly seasick. So. It, it was troublesome on the treadmill. Okay. But oh. apart from that, it was fine. Yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. And you get there and you hike. Not much. So um, you you can go ashore. Sometimes they they uh, have a fleet of zodiacs. So yeah, yeah, very fancy rubber dinghies basically that will take you ashore on various islands, and you can go and see the penguins. Um, pr- actually, probably the best experience was was the sh- simply the ship uh, sailing up and down something called the Le Maire Channel, which is just this very scenic uh, channel, probably a mile or so wide, a little bit wider. Uh, filled with uh, pack ice, but the, the ship is uh, capable of going through Get that. Going so they went all the way through and all the way back, and we saw killer whales and humpbacks and seals and all sorts. And that oh, was that was awesome. extraordinary. Yeah. Do you for, did you do any photography? Get some good pictures of that. I only took about two and a half thousand shots, <laughs> and that, that was <laughs> at the low job. end. That, that was, there were people taking ten thousand. Oh my god, that's hilarious. So. Come on. No, go, go, Desiree. No, go I was just going to say, so, so next, so you spent some time there and lecturing on and off, or were you only lecturing when you are at sea? No, no, lecturing on and off every day, um, okay. and then visited a couple of islands. We had one, uh, so it's, it's basically, it's an ice-enabled ship, so one uh, stop where they simply drove into a, an ice sheet, which oh. came about a third of the way down the ship, and they were able to open, open a side door and everybody get out and walk around, and we did a bit of skiing, and... Uh, went to one, well, only one habited place, uh, mm-hmm. where as an old, as an old English, an old British um, Port Lockroy, so an old British Antarctic base, a very tiny little place. Uh, and then we headed back. How, how was it on the way we back? Have a, we have a question. I here. Dr. Oh, Down's sorry. woken up. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> sorry. You should introduce Just, yourself, Jim. Um, I'm Jim, uh, I work with uh, Monty and previously with Mike. In fact, we were appointed the same job, but he left. Um, <laughs> just, I, so I'm being stupid. Um, this this ship was doing something else, or was it just a kind of a, a, ho- a holiday with a with a, a um, with a lecture on it? I mean, so it's with a, a conference. It, so it's, what, it, what is the? It's a cruise the, ship, right? And and you kind of go, well, it's a cruise ship. Why do they call it an expedition? Um, and I, I was definitely sceptical going into it about the, the whole expedition label. And, uh, and, and living is comfortable. Uh, you know, the food is good. Um, but the, uh, the conditions are definitely challenged. So, so everything you do is dependent on the ice conditions and the weather. Um, for example, we, the first day we were near the mainland, we were able to go down into the Weddell Sea, uh, which is normally completely impossible because there had been a big storm that had blown the ice south. So we went down and saw, saw some marine life that we wouldn't otherwise have seen but it's a, it's called the national Ge- geographic so the, the ship is called the national geographic explorer it's owned by a company called lindblad who do uh oh, who so just do ex- ex- basically expedition okay. cruises so they only do the the antarctic the arctic right, right, right. and only through like national geographic labeled and they're, they're a, they've been a partner with national geographic for a decade or more gotcha the so there are national geographic photographers on board and so, so it doesn't count i don't think as an expedition i haven't really done much of this but unless it gets messy so when did it get messy <laughs> so it was it was intriguingly medium messy during the trip in that we that we'd wake up and they'd say well we were going to go there but we've gone to another place because <laughs> there's pack ice all over the place there or a storm has got messy. more properly messy when we came back across the drake passage um and we left slightly early to avoid a storm that we didn't completely avoid um <laughs> and it was it was quite rough for about 36 40 hours um so hang on, hang on. It was 36 on the way down. Where'd you get the extra hours from? Well, you get a bit slower when it's rougher. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely when you stop when the boat gets damaged. And <laughs> oh, oh no. There. Okay, it's an ex- here we go. Jim, it's an expedition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was also sceptical of that. So that what were the waves, the size of the waves? So up to 15 metres, more typically 10 to 12 metres. 
Oh my so they're on the, they're the bridge, 15 yeah. metres. Metres, yeah. Now, how high do you five think zero. it is? Yeah, we're in a big... Uh, one, one, one five. five. One, one five metres. Like, so 15, 15, 15, 45 feet. 45 feet. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And what's the... Do they... Uh, presumably they don't tell you the risk of... of <laughs> I, I don't boat think the perishing. boat was seriously in danger, but it was of sufficient magnitude to, to give it a couple of flesh wounds, basically. Do you have, to, do you have, to, have to strap down... For that? No, but you have to hold on tight. Most people do, are Do you need to put your life preserver on? Yeah. <laughs> so, we so you don't get did. thrown, thrown <laughs> against the walls and stuff? Can I, when you're in 50-foot waves, does that mean when you're on the tr- in the trough, yeah. you look up 50 feet? Or is it... It's the, peak to trough. So, so, the, to get, so the bridge, the floor of the bridge, which yes. is about four or five stories up, yes. is at 13 metres. Okay. And in oh, a flat okay. boat at 13 metres, you're looking up oh, a couple of metres. Yep. At something which is only about fifteen twenty meters away. Okay. So, so you you they're they're properly big seas, yes. um, and with wind gusting sort of force force ten gusting eleven. And a boat, it's not going to come over you on the radio. But is the boat <laughs> is the boat dipping toe the boat, up, or is it rocking side to side? Are people getting whacked around in the boat? Or uh, yeah. yeah, walking around is difficult. There's okay. ropes ropes in the corridors to hang on to, and um, you to crawl. even even on the bridge. You, you know, a big one, you're, you're definitely holding on to things. So people were um, outside of the room during this? I mean, I would think that you kind of hunkered out. So a yeah. bit, but, but they... They had ginger ale for everybody, just in case they were going to yeah. lose <laughs> So Master and Commander, which everyone may not have seen, when they go around the horn, oh. is it that sort of thing? When they have to cut the sea anchor from the back? Maybe that's not a good example, but... No. It, uh, I guess the seas are... I mean, the, bo- the boat is, is very able. It's got stabilizers. Uh, the yeah. skipper and the crew are extremely good. I mean, ast- astonishingly good. But, um, but the seas are really big. But the, I guess the thing that makes them manageable is that wavelength is very long. Okay. Uh, Southern Ocean, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the waves are going all the way around, uh, and the wavelength is... I'm, I'm, I would guess 100 metres. It's not the notorious short chop of the Strait of Gibraltar. No. It, it's not. Do you, do you want to tell us a story about the I short do, chop? I do not. <laughs> you could do that in a paddleboard. <laughs> but go on. So it's, it's a long, long roll. It's, it, it's, it's generally a long roll, but it gets a bit chaotic if the wind switch shifts yeah. around or if you get close to shallows. So the boat okay. actually lost some windows then? So the, so the boat, so I... Um, Hopefully not I your room. Woke, woke up to hit, have a couple of people knocking on my door saying, uh, "You probably a should put your ship. life jacket oh, on and get dressed," because <laughs> oh um, they'd been a deck down and um, they'd basically opened the door to. They'd heard, heard a crash and a scream. Opened the door to their cabin and saw two virtually naked people, uh, almost covered, not covered in blood, but with blood uh, oh. around, oh, and about two or three inches of water coming down the corridor. Ooh. Oh, geez. Um, so now, as it turned out, that was because of the wind. So the windows are about a metre square. Scene. Titanic. It's not yeah. Titanic. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. The windows are about a metre square, and, and three of the windows had blown in. And consequently, people who'd been asleep or trying to sleep in bed, and it, uh, almost naked, you know, dressed. Oh, in a, I think I would have been dressed fully. Were, <laughs> were hit, hit by uh, a window, a shattering <laughs> window, which is made of safety glass, but a shattering window, and then a large amount of cold water, and then the, ceil- the suspended ceiling as it fell down. Ooh. So they've oh got proper minor injuries with suspected fracture, some lacerations. Um, a little bit of surgery was required when we got to land. Okay, Jim, so ex- expedition? I, no, I, I, I would never doubted it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, but, but not so much at the end. <laughs> so now you have what another are the delegate lecture? fees. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean people must pay that? an awful lot of money to go. Do they not? I, I you don't know. would not be able to disclose the sort of type oh, okay. of. Uh, Sorry, you can look it up, though, can't you? You can look it up, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I think it relates so to the study leave allocation in, in some Australian hospitals. Do they go oh. to? Dif- do they do a different type of uh, extreme thing? No, this is a, it's a. a annual it's not thing. unique, but they don't think it's been done for about twenty years. And oh, it's a one-off. Oh, it, right. it's a, it is a one-off. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So the next one you do, you'll be able to actually give a lecture on this. <laughs> 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 I, I doubt they'll go back to Antarctica again that soon. <laughs> do what we, they're going to kick us out. In a minute, oh, two, yeah. two minutes on Tom Crean. Great, yeah. great, great guy. Legend. Yeah. Okay, any more? So, well, so I, <laughs> I, I know about Tom Crean no because idea. of you, Monty. So, <laughs> I have no idea who um, this person is. We have our meeting in Dingle, yeah. and there's, the, uh, there's a village called Anna Ma- School. Anna School. <laughs> and Tom Crean was born just outside Anna School yeah. in, I think, 1877. Yeah. And uh, long story short, but uh, ran away, joined the Navy. Sailed to well, Australia and New Zealand. To go, actually. But, uh, so the, okay. No, go he let the cow into the potato <laughs> field. Potatoes very valuable in Ireland at that anyway, time. Anyway, moving on. Got in trouble. 
Uh, turned up in a small port called Littleton in New Zealand mm. uh, at exactly the same time as Scott turned up mm. with the Terra Nova mm. and joined, I hope I've got the right bait for the right expedition. There's a lot of, but, uh, but essentially someone on that ship who'd been a long-standing troublemaker uh, got into a bit of a fight, ran away, ran away. They had a, a vacancy for an able seaman and all of a sudden Tom Green was going to Antarctica and that began a career which spanned... Uh, being with the last party that turned back with Scott's expedition. Mm. So Scott's expedition that got to the pole a little bit later than Amundsen, you know, huge disappointment. And in fact, the, the guys who went to the pole all died. Mm. Crean was in the last party that turned back before that uh, and was involved in a rescue, then had to walk uh, for 18 hours, 35 miles on his own. He volunteered to do the walk, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, oh to, to rescue one of the guys then. Uh, was then actually worked with Scott uh, on ships for a number of years after that. Uh, and ultimately ended up on the Shackleton expedition. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they become icebound. Mm -hmm. They go all the way around to close to the peninsula. Mm -hmm. The ice gets smaller and smaller. They take to the boats. They get to Elephant Island. Mm -hmm. uh, at Elephant Island, six of them get in a boat, including Crean and Shackleton. They get to the most extraordinary boat, boat journey over a couple of weeks to yeah. South Georgia, which is 800 miles away, in this tiny 23-foot boat, uh, the James Caird. Yep. And they arrive on the wrong side of South Georgia, which was a feat of navigation in itself. And then three of them, who are the only three who are basically still standing, which mm. is Green, Worsley and Shackleton, cross the island at, at, actually at an extraordinary pace. So, that, so uh, there's a great IMAX movie with yeah. um, Stephen Venables, so British Everest Summiteer without oxygen. Ronald Mesmer, absolute legend <laughs> of high, al high altitude mountaineering, and Conrad Anker, who's the American that found uh, Mallory's body, who tried to replicate the journey and took three days. Um, so they and finally they did it in, in 36 hours. Well, they had a bit of a move at the top, didn't they? They, had they a bit of jumped fat. off down a big slope and slid they, for they a They took off their top coats and decided to get it, see if they could. Yeah, I'm so glad they had top coats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then there's, there's, there's the narrative uh, that plays out after that of the. Of, uh, rescuing the other three that had come in the boat with them that were by this time incapacitated, then going back to Argentina and over multiple attempts rescuing the group on Elephant mm -hmm. Island. And then, and then a, I guess the very interesting post story of everybody coming back, some of them going off to war and dying. Uh, it, they were there during the First World War. Yeah, they left just after the start. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, Churchill, who was the First Lord of the Admiralty, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. said, crack on and go. Yeah. Uh, and then they came back, and a number of them died from a variety of things. And Tom Crean was notable mm. for coming home, settling down, getting married. He had three daughters, one of whom sadly died, and lived to a ripe old age running the South Pole Inn. Yeah, in on a school where you can go, and if you go in there, all the memorabilia is there. A lot of the yeah. Hurley photographs, the original Hurley photographs, are there. And um, the person who is behind the bar does a great, um, about three, four o'clock every day, does a great Guinness. truncated account. Uh, he does a great Guinness <laughs> as well, does a great truncated <laughs> account of the whole Tom Crean um, story. He actually sadly died of a, a burst appendix, believe oh, it or not. After no. all of that, after all that. <laughs> after all that, he burst his appendix. He was taken in, nothing against Cork Hospital, well done all. I think he went to Cork eventually, having gone a bit further in and died of a burst appendix. Oh, Which yeah. could bring us on to emergency laparotomy, but probably, probably, yeah. probably, <laughs> probably shouldn't be. If you want to go and visit that, the other thing is if you want to go and see the boat, you can see yeah. the replica in, I think, still in the Naval Museum in Greenwich. D D Dulwich College. Yeah, the original's in Dulwich College. Oh, the, repli yeah, yeah. the replica, which you can't go to Dulwich College unless you ask nicely and see the original, because he shackled to us, I think, from Dulwich College. Uh, but you can go into the Naval Museum at Greenwich and see the replica, and it's astonishingly small because they basically put a whole load of rocks in the bottom to ballast it. And then they put over the, the, um, the, the boat, they put a skin over it, and then they put a sail up, and navigating without any nav aids, they managed to hit the hit the Three the sextant shots in two weeks. Exactly. exactly. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So that's a longer thing. So your story's a bit, bit <laughs> pathetic, really. <to> <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> <laughs> it is, but I have to say, having, having known of the, the Crean story for two decades now, it was... You're into Absolutely it. Absolutely brilliant. You're now doing, doing the research and, and getting the full story. You're so did you tell that story um, yeah. before you let before you left and just crossed before we back left. over? You're a creenophile now, aren't you? I am. Yeah, I am. Can you go yeah. look at it properly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> All well right, done. guys. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much for sitting down with thank us. You I'm glad you're here me. safe and sound. <laughs> no um, worse oh, for the Jim, wear. Jim's got to be a bit quieter next time. He's a bit, he was a bit <laughs> set of <Sorry>. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you promised you weren't going to say anything. Couldn't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank right, you very much. Cheers, all. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for downloading and listening to Top Med Talk. 
Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even got our own YouTube channel. Whichever your favourite social media feed is, we're bound to be there. Find us. Also, subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss an episode. And make sure you go to the Top Med Talk website, topmedtalk.com. And get on board with the email updates. Oh, whilst you're at it as well, I suggest you download our entire back catalogue. We're categorising at the moment. We're having a little look through it. It may not always be in the form that you currently find it. So if you get your hard drive ready for a full-on download via the website, perhaps, or perhaps through your podcatcher. Oh, and if you fancy meeting us, why not go to the website, ebpom.org forward slash meetings. Our next big event is EBPOM USA, the Dallas Masters course, a perioperative care practicum. Have a look for details of that and some of the other meetings coming up across the next year. EBPOM.org forward slash meetings.